It has been a bit of a year. It's been in six months since the election. Uh, Peter Dunn, in actual fact, has just written an article somewhere that I've read and been referred to, uh, suggesting that Labour Party has been treading water in the last six months and had their thunder stolen. But there have been those out there who have been enormously active in uh, um, opposing, if you like, the government's agenda over the last six months. And probably one of the most prominent is our good friend, the Honourable Willie Jackson, Labour Party MP, and he joins us now. Willie, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good, Michael. I'm good. I'm fitting you in between Duncan Garner. I'm just going on to his first podcast very shortly, and they said I've got 15 minutes, so way, way you go. They, they, they remember you well. <laughs> <laughs> good on them. Um, listen, it's lovely to have you on. Um, listen, mate, just quickly, you want to talk about, and um, you talked to my producer Hugh yesterday, about you're keen, very keen to talk about the Waitangi Tribunal. Talk about, when anything, you, talk about anything you want, mate. Anything you okay, want. well, let's talk about the Waitangi Tribunal first of all. Um, you were the minister, I think, responsible for appointing both the current judge, chief judge of the Waitangi Tribunal, That's right. and what many of the tribunal members themselves. That is correct. I, I, I appointed Judge Karen Fox and, uh, uh, and Derek Fox. You know Foxy? Yeah, um, yep, yep. You know, you know Derek. Uh, um, David Williams, Professor David Williams. Do you know David Williams? He's a pa- bloke, professor at Auckland University. I suppose a bit of a red... Uh, Professor, you wouldn't agree with much of that he, he said. <laughs> uh, uh, but hey, we've got to have a, we've got to, you know, but I, I think he's terrific. You know, he's got a, got a good uh, mildly perspective. Look, I think the tribunal's incredibly important, uh, um, Michael. I, I'm really proud of it. I was proud to be the minister. I hope that it stays in place forever. So to be, be very clear, I'm not on, on the Shane Jones walker. Uh, uh, and why? Well, it's clear. Would you, you know, would you trust the you know, if you've got David Seymour, if you're a Māori, would you trust the Crown if David Seymour was in charge? I mean, you know, you know why the Commission's in place. It's about um, fixing historical um, breaches, but it's also about contemporary claims. And, uh, you know, you just don't know where the Crown's going to go sometimes. They're really proud of their work, have seen their work as you have. Man, you, as, and I know you know you might might not be a big supporter, and that's fine. But I've seen their work in terms of Māori language, Māori health, Māori housing, the influence they've had on iwi. I think they've just been tremendous. I don't really want to talk about the High Court case right now because it is, you know, I do have some respect for the process, uh, Michael, so I don't want them to say, well, what is No, 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 I'm not going to talk to you about that. I'm interested in uh, the powers of the tribunal. And in many ways, uh, we've talked about the legal background of this on the show earlier, or last week, Willie. In yes, many ways, yes. the tribunal is evolving into a quasi Supreme Court, isn't it? Uh, when I talk about yeah, US Supreme Court, with the ability to question and strike down, well, not to strike down legislation, but to clear legislation injurious to Maori in general. Is that what you intended when you appointed those tribunal members? No, no, not at all. I intended when, when, I, when I put those people up, I want them to put up a good. Maori perspective. I've never seen the uh, um, tribunal in that light. Uh, it does only, as you know, have recommendation power. But I think we would all acknowledge that it's got it's had huge influence, right? There's no doubt about that. And uh, some would say too much influence. But it's given us an opportunity uh, to look back at the past wrongs of the crown. Our people were um, decimated by some of the Crown policies uh, through the years. That's why we have the treaty settlements process. But the reality is the tribunal only has recommendation um, powers. It's not, a, it's not a court. It doesn't have, have, those, fun- fu- um, have those functions. Um, and, and the other th- thing, Michael, is the government can ignore the tribunal recommendations, and you know they did that in 2004, uh, with the foreshore and seabed, the, the yep, crown Helen Clark did. Yep. How and said, hey, "Go jump in the lake, uh, tribunal. We yep. are not doing this." And and they legislated, uh, this, uh, brought in legislation, foreshore and seabed, and, and the rest is history. So the government still has the ultimate power. The power influence is huge, and I'm really proud of that. I don't know if I'd go uh, that far. Oh, no, in fact, I wouldn't go that far in terms of Supreme Court, but I, I have no problem with them playing a major part, as they do, uh, but the government has that ability and power to ignore. And so that's still important to you, that Parliament is sovereign over the tribunal? I think so. I I question it. If I'm being honest, I question it sometimes. 
you know, I'm being honest with you, but but I think so. I, 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 I you know, even though I think Parliament can still make the wrong decisions, as they did in terms of foreshore and seabed, and I marched against that, and I, was, I supported the formation of the Māori Party in 2004, um, you know, as long as you don't get a lot of nut jobs, you know, in, in Parliament. I mean, you know, your mates in the ACT Party might totally take over. I mean, they're threatening to now, Michael. I mean, just, but they would be at least you know? democratically elected, wouldn't they, Willie? I well, mean, that would well, be the will yeah. of the New Zealand people. That, that, that's true. That's true. And then, of course, you and I will get into the argument about democracy and is it one man, one vote and all that type of principle. And you would have heard me talk about this, Michael, in terms of um, democracy being tweaked and, have, and has changed. Yeah, but it's Look, a democracy yeah. that elected you and a record number of Maori yeah, uh, people true. of Maori that's descent true. into our current parliament. That's I mean, it's amazing, that's really, that's you think true. about it. You're the that's most over ethnicity in New Zealand, Willie. <laughs> You're getting too much, too many. Can't, we're, not get, we're not getting enough. Have we got the boot? Have we got the boot? Michael, but I believe, I've always been of the view that democracy has changed uh, with the MMP. You ha you'd have to admit that too, right? Of oh, no, no, no. I campaigned for MMP. That's right. But, 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 but everybody, you know, your, my critics will go, oh, he says it's changed. He says democracy is different. You and I both know it. Look at Epson. It's a classic example. You had Goldsmith and Seymour coming up with a deal. You had Rodney Hyde coming up with a deal. Uh, and they said, oh, just, just give your party vote. Uh, to, to national and let the candidate go through. It's changed everywhere. You've got democracy, a, a, a democracy where you have two votes if you're, a, if you're a homeowner. You have two votes in terms of the election, a list vote and an, and an electorate vote. So that's why I say democracy has changed for, for, for a number of years now. And we yeah, but it's still the concept vote. of one man, one vote, isn't it? Oh, and yes, that we, yes, we add up all the votes at the end yes. and the majority wins. That's right, that's right. But who would have believed, uh, Michael, that... Uh, you know, we, for instance, at 37% would have become the government and, and, and National scored 44% that night. When would mm -hmm. that have happened in past? <laughs> when would that have happened no, in past? No, but I mean, but, but proportionately, um, uh, the, you, you went into deal with New Zealand first and, and that gave you numbers right. and the Greens as well. So a majority of you supported um, anti-national um, direction, if you like. That's right. Um, that, that, but, that's but, right. That's right. But going, uh, just on the gang legislation too, if I, while I've got you on this, yes. I'm intrigued... Why is the Labor Party um, opposed to the gang legislation amendment bill when last year your party as government recognised you had a serious problem with gangs and you were seeking to ramp up anti-gang legislation yourself? It's not an easy one. Uh, for us, at the moment we've actually supported. Uh, the, the, we're actually supporting it going to select committee. I'm not, uh, as you know, I'm not like I'm not. Uh, although I, I'm not like you, although I understand your um, and, and respect actually what you did in terms of standing up against things in past year. I don't. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, with that, I, I have patches banned on my marae. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. Think, Why do you do yeah, that? No, no, Why no, do no. you ban gangs on your marae, Willie? Because, I, you know, I don't think it's a great look. You know, we've got a school on my marae, Michael. You know, we have services for, for people on the marae. And although I'm not comfortable, sorry, although I'm pretty comfortable around, they don't worry me, I accept that they worry a lot of other people. And, and you've seen the intimidation, so I respect that and I understand that. I just think that the legislation is, I think it's a bit nonsens nonsensical. I, I think it's workable, Michael. I don't think coppers are going to go in and, you know, I wor worry about the time that they're going to spend going in trying to take patches of, of, of gangs. I don't think it can happen. I've always believed in resources going to communities, going to families, going to Māori providers, uh, and going to going to uh, mainstream providers who can look after families. Yeah, Willie, I've heard... A, mate, can I know? just put, push back on that argument, though? I've heard yep, that yep. argument for the last 15, 20 years, Willie, so have you. Yep. And yep, listen, yep. what's happened in the last five, six years? Massive proliferation of gang memberships and gang associates in this country to the point where you, as a party, and you would have been sitting around a cabinet going, oh my God, what can we do? Because it's a yep. problem. I mean, in other words, all the other remedies that have been proposed yep. have failed, have they not? Uh I don't think enough investment has been put in those areas. That's what I, that's what I say. I don't think enough investment has been given to communities, to Maori providers, to 
organisations. I, I think that you need a balanced strategy. It's not a balanced strategy. Uh, and I just don't think, oh, well, you just go in and rip the patches off. No, they're all nonsense. They're not going to do that. The coppers ain't going to do that. I think we have to. Well, they did a longer do it. Yeah, well, you had a bit of you had a little bit of success for a while, eh? You know. I'll, well, I'll give no, you exactly. That, you know? And what well, I'm just saying is that it's just mm. it's not the silver bullet, Willie. We both know that. No, no. But no, it's no. another tool in the toolbox that police can use when something yeah. uh, is threatening to get out of hand. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I, I you know, I'm, I understand. I'm not unsympathetic, and I support all citizens in terms of their safety. But I've always said that, and I'm at that point now. I tell you, I, I, I was. When you, when you had a crack at it, I, I, I thought, I mean, as you said, well, come on, Willie and John, you say you, you guys been the, I mean, JT's the same guy been the patches from you in my eyes. So what's different, eh? That's, that's your question uh, to me. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. Well, that's and, and listen, question. I and, was... And, and you and you use it for good reasons, for exactly yes. the reasons you said. So if it's not if it's good enough to ban them from the Marai, why isn't it mm. good enough to ban them from our communities? Yes, yes, yes. And, and I understand it. I just think I just think it's unworkable from the coppers, all the coppers that I've spoken to. That, 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 that uh, I know it's another tool, but I don't. I, I doubt very much that they'll go in and break everything up. I think it'll be it'll be a nonsensical law. I think more investment has to go into the areas that I'm talking about. Uh, and, but we also have to have a balanced approach for doing that. But, of course, the other side said that we were we were too soft and Mark Mitchell's going on and on about it. But well, to we, be fair, we, we probably were, New Zealand thought that, Willie, didn't they, last year? I mean, if you and I are being honest with each other, New Zealand did mm. think that Labour was too soft on gangs. 